So we're talking about today about Deva, the, the, uh, the fifth plague, and there are two ways that it could be understood. One is the uh, perspective of the Egyptians and the Israelites living at that time, and the other is the perspective of the generations, that is to say, our perspective. So as for the perspective of the, uh, of the contemporary players, I would point to the preceding uh, Maka of Oro, but not the Maka itself, but the colloquy there between um, Moshe and Paro. Uh, Paro says, okay, go worship uh, your God, but do it Ba'aretz internally in Egypt. And Moshe says, we can't do it because it's the uh, Avodah Zara of the Egyptians. Um, they will assault us. So you can understand Paro's response, uh, which he says, okay, go go to the Midbar, but don't go too far in one of two ways. Either uh, he's saying to Moshe, you know, Moshe, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. Um, thank you for reminding me. Or possibly, and more probably, um, Pope Paro knew exactly what he was saying. And um, in fact, what he was really looking for was for the Israelites to worship their gods, uh, the Rabboni Shalom, in Egypt, thereby instigating a pogrom in which the Egyptians would fall upon the Israelites and probably plunder all their possessions. If that were the case, then the succeeding Maka of Dever makes a lot of sense because it is Mida Kenegad Mina. It is a punishment for the Egyptians who wanted, or at least Paro wanted, to plunder the Israelites of their cattle, of their possessions, and Mida Kenegad Mina, the most satisfying of all type, of all kinds of punishment, or at least a vengeful punishment, um, the same thing would be visited on the was visited on the Egyptians. So that is a, a possible contemporary perspective. I, I would only add that um, um, Girsa Yakasa, uh, we seem to think that the uh, Egyptians um, were um, were vegetarians and therefore would have been were, were offended by the Israelites slaughtering um, slaughter, slaughtering um, slaughtering sheep and cattle. Um, it probably though wasn't so. The Israelites, the Egyptians rather, were probably um, uh, uh, meat eaters. And I say this because uh, on the one hand um, there is um, there were numerous. Um, Egyptian gods that were bovine gods, gods that were represented by cattle on the one hand, as you can see from this book, The God and Goddesses of Ancient Egypt. Uh, on the other hand, there's a book by uh, a fellow named John Romer called Ancient Lives, in which he um, describes the um, the lives of the tomb makers, uh, those who made the tom tombs of um, the pharaohs and uh, the, the ranking aristocracy in the 19th and 20th dynasties of Egypt, the 19th dynasty being the, the time of the Yitzhak Mitzrayim. And uh, that, it, it, that village called now Der el Medina is one of the most um, studied sites in the ancient world because there's a lot of epigraphic evidence there, a lot of papyruses, a lot of um, inscriptions, a lot of graffiti. And um, there it comes down to us uh, one instant in the eighth year of Nernertach, who's the um, son of Ramses II, second, in which there was a huge feast um, in the village, and they were given oxen uh, to slaughter uh, great delicacies. So the fact that the Egyptians were offended um, by the, the Israelites slaughtering uh, their cattle, cattle and sheep is not because they were vegetarians, not because it offended their gods, but presumably because the slaughtering of the, uh, of the Israelite sacrifices would have been a redirection um, of, of the um, animals to the service of the Rabboni Shalom, which would have offended their sensitivities because their bovine gods, uh, obviously, were of were Vodazara. Putting that aside, though, I think we can, we can, we can conjecture that, in fact, uh, this was a Mida connected Mida, and that therefore the succession, uh, as understood by the Israelites and Egyptians, follows reasonably from the, uh, the incidents surrounding the, the preceding Maka of Arof. But what about us today? What about Lidoros? See, here I think we take our cue from the Sifri and Pashashlach, which is um, um, encoded in the, uh, in, the, in the Haggadah, very, very famous uh, verse, very troublesome verse, in which uh, the Haggadah says, Yana Chazaka Dever, Yana Chazaka, the strong arm with Rabboni Shalom, is the plague of Dever. And that doesn't seem right. That seems very, very curious. So I think um, we can understand it based on something that the Rashlomo Kluger says, in, in the uh, in the Haggadah, which appeared about 20 years ago, Masayid de Yotzer, and uh, he has numerous attempts to explain this passage. But one of the things he says is that God prefers not to do miracles shlokaderach hateva, and in fact, Dever, the plague of the fifth plague, is of all the makos, it's the one that is most bederach hateva. And in support of this, I would point to uh, the other incident in Tanakh 
where uh, the, the term Yad Hashem is used in connection with Dever, it is the end of Shmuel and Beis, in which David makes the mistake of counting the populace. God gives him three alternative punishments, famine, um, uh, 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 defeat of the hands of his enemies, and uh, Dever, and he says, that, as we know in Taknun, Nipla no Yad Hashem, Hakar, uh, David, David chooses Dever, which is in fact the most natural uh, of, of all phenomena, and plagues being things that um, unfortunately afflicted mankind and continues to afflict mankind from generation to generation. The point being apparently that although uh, the sturm and drying the the the, um, the, uh, the sound and light of uh, the events surrounding Tzitz Mitzrayim are um, very very prominent and uh, seem to be the Yad Hashem, what the Haggadah, what the Sifri is telling us is that, in fact, the real Yad Hashem, the real Chozek, Yad, Yad Chazaka, Lidoros, is not um, the storm and drang, but rather uh, the way God conducts the world, B'derach HaTeva, that is Yad Hashem. And in fact, you see this uh, from the episode of Eliyahu at Chorev, in which uh, God parades Ruach, uh, a... a um, uh, cyclonic wind and rash, uh, tr uh, earth-shaking tremors and an ash, burning fire, and uh, Kadosh Baruch Hu then sa the Navi then says uh, that God is not in any of these things. It is um, uh, uh, God is b b called to Mamadaka in the silent and hidden ways in which God conducts the world. So we can say that for us, Lidoros, the message of Dever is that put aside the ruach, the ash, um, the, the the rash. Uh, of of Matan Torah and and, and Yitzitz Mitzrayim, that's not the way the world works. The Yad Chazakarik of Akadosh Baruch Hu isn't called Mamadaka. It is the conduct of the world in a natural way. Thank you very much for listening.